Hey guys, what's up? It is me, Zabri Yumi, here today with, of course, the beautiful, wonderful, everlasting summer by Soviet Games. I want to take a moment, just listen to the soundtrack, just listen to it. This is dope. This is dope. Alright, beautiful. Alright, so we were here, if I remember correctly, when we last left off. And I just got back from the music club. Alright, so I'm gonna go to the clubhouse. It's just talking about extracurricular activities. Alright, so I recorded it once. And this is just talking about me joining the cybernetics club. Real good part is somewhere up ahead. If you want to actually watch this mm, whatever I don't know what to say man it's weird Slavia gets him to sign it remember the last episode I was given I right, go to the infirmary this is where things get weird ah. Elf is fine fresh local air visited and answered a common infirmary like my school's like my school doctor's room Middle-aged woman sat at the table. Middle-aged woman sat at the table. Obviously, she was a nurse. She gazed intently at me, assessing me while continuing to write something down. Well, hello, Pioneer. She sounds manly, said the nurse without being distracted from her work. Good afternoon, ma'am. I have something. Sit down, please. I looked around the room. On the couch, I sat down. Stripped. She said all of it with an even tone. What for? To inspect, to os auscultate, I don't know that word, to check your health, you know. By the way, my name is Violetta. You can call me Voila. I, I gave her the name Voila, or Viola, or Viola. I, I called her Voila. But we'll call her Viola, or Viola, Viola, whatever. Voila. She turned to me. What are you waiting for? Strip. No hand time. But I have no health issues. I've got this. I neatly gave her the paper. Later. She took the tethoscope off her neck. She seemed like she intended to probe me with her hands out. But then someone knocked on the door. The nurse, the, nurse, the nurse answered unwillingly. The nurse answered unwillingly. Come in. In a moment, the door opened widely. An electronic rushed inside. He's got a blue eye. Not a black guy, it's blue. Blue. It's blue! Well, hello. Hello, I fell during the football game. Nonsense, of course. I'm okay, but Olga Dmitrievna. There was a massive bruise under electronic side. I doubt that this could be a football injury. Sit down, I'll have a look, she said to him. And you, pass me a checklist. The nurse, signed it, the nurse quickly signed it and continued. If something hurts, come to me immediately, Pioneer. Uh, I decided not to answer and went out, closing the door behind me. Excuse me, by the way. The nurse is surely something else. This all leads up... Uh, spoiler alert. This all leads up to a card game. I haven't played the card game yet. Somehow this all goes to a card game. Actually, I love reading, but I think spending my days in the library under the current circumstances is well beyond my scope. So I'd better hurry up. With a hard, hard, hard up with this checkpoint. Soviet everything, USSR, USSR. Back in the USSR. As I stepped inside, a memory from my childhood emerged in my head. It was very vivid. I'm seven or nine years old. I'm at the library with my mother while she's looking through the books I might need for my studies. I'm sitting in the corner and looking through their collection of comic books. Back then, I didn't know why they had so many or why I couldn't take them with me. And Oh, I thought I saw a creepy crawly. The notion of collective property was something my mind hadn't grasped yet at that age. However, back then, a whole concept of property was pretty hazy to me. This memory seemed even even strange, and now while I was standing in this particular camp where they might have managed to build communism in three years, Soviet symbolism was all over the place, and shelves were full of related literature. 
Of course, I wasn't planning to read any of these. Getting acquainted with a full collection of books by Marx was the last thing on earth I had. I would think of. Where's the librarian? I didn't spend much time looking for her. She's asleep. I looked closely. Short hair, thick glasses, rather cute face. She was snoring so peacefully I just couldn't wake her up. I can't wait. If she doesn't wake up in half an hour, maybe then... I couldn't just sit there, so I took a random book from the nearest shelf. Arthur Schopenhauer. The world is will and representation. I don't make fun of me if I pronounce that wrong. I opened it roughly in the middle and started reading. Life man. Oh, hold up. If you want to go back, if you want to pause like like at that very second and read that, go ahead. I'm going to continue because I didn't want to read all that. Someone knocked on the door. I closed the book quickly and ran to its and ran to the door and put it back in its place. What a nice habit, knocking on the door. I should pick it up. It was Lena. When I tried to record this, I kept calling out that Lena had to be in either music club, clubhouse, or library. Library, gone with the wind. I'm calling it right now. I can't remember because it was yesterday. Mm. Yesterday? It was yesterday? Anyway, actually, yeah, I do remember. She's got gone with the wind. She's returning now. I smiled. It's got no role in this at all. Hi, I uh, just wanted to return a book. She had the copy of Gone with the Wind that I saw yesterday. Oh, Zenya's sleeping? I'll come back later. I'm awake. Turned around and surprised to look at her. She eyed me closely from behind her table. What is it you want? I needed you to check here. Give it here. She quickly signed the paper and gave it back to me. She had this look in her face that made me want to keep quiet. Well, you're in a library, pal. Just thought I'd tell you that. Lena came up to her with her book. I thanked Zenya and went out. Finally, I got all the signatures. Now I had to go back to old Dimitri. I didn't give it to her. If I'm talking fast, tell me, because, like, I want to get to this fast to get to the card game. She was sitting in front of her cabin, reading a book. It doesn't look like a good role model for a perfect pioneer that she was planning to turn me into. I wonder if her responsibilities extended beyond giving fiery speeches at lineup, scoping Ileana, and getting, into, getting involved into my moral, physical, and ideological growth. Here. I offered her my checklist. She placed it in her pocket without even looking at the signatures. Great, I could have signed it myself without going anywhere. Perfect, so did you meet our nurse? Yes. For some reason, I questioned some shivers on my spine. Which club have you signed up for? I didn't. I need to think first. That's a pity. It's vital for you to... Excuse me again. It's vital for you to sign in somewhere tomorrow. Of course, sure. Right, it's time to go to dinner. About time, I was getting hungry. There's the canteen. Don't sit by Oyana again, you moron. I headed to the canteen together with Olga Dimitri Hebdo. I looked at the sky and noticed the sun was already setting. Is there any Sonic Lisa in there? Ooh. On the porch to Lisa, Electronic, Oyana, and Slavia. Ah, Slavia. As we came up, I heard what they were talking about. And never call me Vach again, or you'll get another one. She gave him the black eye. Yep. Because, you know. Soccer ball's not gonna give you a black eye. I wanna go right in your face. Because it's a larger surface area than a fist. The fist goes in your eye like that. Who's a prostitute? It Never call me Devache again. That's like the Russian version of 4chan, I'm guessing. Forum board. Message board. I didn't call you that. You're hearing things. He did. He did. I heard it all. You weren't even there. Cry drop! I was there. I was in the bushes. Come on, you guys. Stop it. So it wasn't a football injury or trying to suffer. I'm talking so fast, I'm salivating way more than I usually do. I shouldn't... I shouldn't have grabbed the drink. But I need my gaming drink! Ah! So it wasn't football injury or trying to suffer from earlier today. The nurse did a good job. I couldn't even see his black eye. <clears throat> Older Mitch Ebner came up and asked him about all the records. About the records. What happened? Elisa and she's cough. I didn't do anything. She shrugged with antipathy and went inside. Right, dinner time. Time to go inside, point out all the purple. Purple, 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 purple. Slightly purple hair. It's kind of a lavender, but still purple. 
Migu. There were too many free seats. There were a few chairs near few free chairs near Lisa across the canteen, but I'd sooner starve for a week than risk to risk my head in here. Now, if he was complaining about why why weren't any of these people at the lineup? Are these people just like figments, imagination, or a screw up, like they just didn't want to go back and fix it. Maybe he's going quicker in the head, who knows? Hmm. There was also a seat near Oyana, but I'm not traditional Chinese, whatever calls them cuisine. Ooh, Ooh, ooh. No offense, to Chinese viewers. Finally, a free chair near Miku. Looks like I've. Looks like I'll have to pick my poison. You mind if I sit here? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, no, I don't mind. Oh yeah, I mean, yes, you can sit here. I sat down. Look, it's Buckwheat today. Do you like Buckwheat and chicken? I don't like chicken. Well, not that I don't like it. But if you'd ask me what I prefer, to say stroganoff, beef, or gout. No, maybe just a hamburger or rum steak. Do you like rum steak? I'm not that picky about my food. And that's the simple truth. 48 Capex Leningradsko. Ice cream brand. I don't know how to pronounce those. Good pronunciations. Put them in. Oh, hey. Whoa, I didn't I didn't read that. Go back. Oh, is that so? But the desserts, you know, they're, they aren't really good here. I like ice cream. Do you like ice cream? I just saw 48 Capex in Leningradsko. Oh, sorry. I keep talking about myself. Maybe you like Eskimo better. Then we're starting to get on my nerves thanks to such company. Miku! Hot to Miku. And I'm not the kind of person to just ignore someone who's talking to me. Even her. We're at the same table after all. I'm oh, sorry, I just love the soundtrack. It's got jazz to it. In the beginning, it's got that rock feel like, yeah, let's do this, pump you up. And like, there's some parts where it's like mellow. It's like you need to calm down, slow back. You're reading the story, man. Bring it to your heart. Okay. Right under your left nipple. You know, I almost bought a waffle cone and started eating, and then you know what? I found a screw there, a real screw. Can you imagine that? Or was it a bolt? I don't really know. Screw goes in time with screwdrivers, and bolts goes in time with the turn with the wrench, yes? There was speed eating contest on. I would probably be in the top three winners by now. Right, I'll be going. Enjoy your meal. I got up and headed outside. Miku wasn't saying something, but her words were drowned out by the crowd of loudly dining pioneers. So where were they at? Where were the other pioneers at the lineup? Hmm? Just wondering. I went out, sat on. I went out, sat on the chairs, and waiting for my dinner to settle down a bit. I just sat there and watched night falling. Everything was so lively here during the day: kids laughing and yelling happily, fooling and running around, constant chatter, games going on, swimming at the beach. But after dark, camp changes entirely. The sound of the day was soft for silence. Only now, then broken by crickets chirping and or a night bird, the camp was going to sleep. Every shadow you could see things. Maybe a ghost, spirit of the forest, a wild animal, human being would be the last thing to expect. That is how it looked last night, you know? I'm sorry, like beautiful ambiance going into this game. Or it's because like, I'm right by the window and I can hear the birds chirping in the trees just like a few feet in front of my window, I don't know. The locals followed their routine very strictly. In the day, the camp was theirs, and the night belonged to more of the forces of nature than to humans. Someone touched my shoulder. It's the prostitute. Oh, never mind. I forgot. Wrong time. It was electronic. Let's go play cards. Cards? Yeah, I invented a new game. A good one. Good like how? Well, first you gotta find the cards, and I'll tell you. Then go find them. What's the problem? Only Olga and Dimitri and I have them, but she won't give them to me. Why so? Well, the last time when we Olga and Dimitri and Sabia came up on the porch. Olga and Dimitri and Simeon? I just wanted to. Olga and Dimitri and Simeon just wanted to ask you the question. <clears throat> ask you about the possibility of getting playing cards. Actually, for what purpose? We invented a new game. Not we. You did. What game? I need the cards to show you. Hmm, I don't like this. Well, if Simeon is with you, then perhaps it's okay. To be really honest, we'll go fetch them together, we'll get to meet you, Ooh. Should I go with her or go alone? As you can see, I've already chose to go with her. What happens if I go alone? I guess I know what happens if I go with her. Go alone, go with her, go alone, go with her. What up, guys? I'm gonna need to make this decision. Right after camp, from planning, I figured I might as well go, go ahead and go with her. 
if you don't mind, because it's just going to be action text if I don't. Sure, let's go. We're headed towards my cabin. Roughly halfway there, Sloppy is stopped. I will go back and see what happened. Like, if I didn't choose, like, if I chose to do, like, go alone. Roughly halfway there, Sloppy is stopped. Hey, I just remembered the cards are in my cabin. Good timing. And where's that? Just down the road, let's go. Bop, bop, bop. We reached a cabin, in fact, it looked more like a trailer. Just wait here a minute, I'll be back. I, it took you just a few seconds to come back. There, you showed me a deck of pretty worn out cards. It must be Mark, these must be marked in and out. That's unsportsmanlike, what happened to fair play? Tell me about it, it's hard to cheat when you don't know the rules. Shall we go? Let's go. On the way back, I decided to try and find, find out about something. How long have you been here? In this camp? About a week. I see. Where did you come from? I'm from the north. That is, the cold north. She looked at me and smiled. Looks like nobody in this camp is inclined to answer even the most innocent of questions. I tried to approach from another angle. And what do you like? What do you mean? Well, your hobbies. Oh, I like nature. Strange. She's not very talkative today for some reason. Nature, I see. Want to become a natural historian? More like normal historian. I was always inter interested in our nation's history. That would suit her well indeed. It appeared among all the locals that she was the only one who had nothing to hide. What if she came here just like me? Simply could not trust anyone enough to tell. Try testing the waters. Why did you choose this camp? I didn't. My parents got a voucher for me for my work. Another failure. Well, if you can choose. It's nice here. I don't think I would choose some other place if I could. Here it's like you're becoming another person. That wasn't how I saw one. No, well, you thought you got sucked into a black hole or abducted by aliens. Who knows? What do you mean? Another person. It's just to say there's so many possibilities. You can learn so much. Meet so many new, interesting people here. Now she started to sound like our chief, which raised a red flag for me. I decided to stop with the questions for now. When we came back, old Dimitri had told Slavia. I just remembered that the cards were at your place. It's okay, we got it. Good, good. Well, Slavia and Olga went inside. I went to, was going to follow, but someone grabbed my hand. Elisa. Her gaze sent a shiver down my spine. Not a nice one. You want something? I asked carefully. You're going to play this stupid game? Uh, yeah, is there something wrong with that? Nope, nothing. She was turning to leave, but then slowly looked back and smiled. So, you play cards? A little. I couldn't figure out what she wanted. So only Dirac, and that's it. Dirac. The game popular in the USSR. Similar to peasant. I don't play cards, so... I don't know any of this. As if you're a poker star. Well, yes, technically. And you don't have a chance. I'm gonna salivate more fucking spit all over my keyboard. Why? Because! So you know the rules? Of course. Well, then you'll have the upper hand. I couldn't see why I would go on talking in motion towards the door. Why do you keep trying to leave? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Let's make a bet. What do you mean? You're such a slowpoke. They're cards. What else? And what do you want to bet on? That I'll win. That's quite a possible outcome. I agree calmly. So, are you afraid? No, I'm not. I'm not going big. I'm not big on bets when I don't like my chances. And you're not big on taking risks, too. Such an astute observation, I'm impressed. Right then, I... No, you're not. Now what? I sighed in exhaustion. She was starting to annoy me with the rubbish talk about some pointless bet. If you won't bet with me, I'll tell everyone you tried to seduce me. What? You heard me. I could imagine her doing this. Don't be stupid. Who's gonna believe you? I've been here at least less than two days. Besides, wanna try your luck? Right. And what'll happen if I win? I won't tell anything. And if I lose? Slow poke mode again? I'll tell everyone you tried to seduce me. I told you already. So you're telling me that I have to work to prove that I didn't do something that I didn't do something that when I actually didn't do it. If that's how you want to look at it. No, that's not how I want this. I want to look at it. I'm looking at it because that's how it is. How I want to look at it. Not a simple decision. On the on one hand, it was stupid to agree. I didn't know the rules and gambling was my thing. On the other hand, 
She really could make my life a living hell. Then again, can I even trust her? She can do it even if I win. So, have you made a decision? I was going to answer, but suddenly Lena came around me from behind. What? Nothing. Lena hurried inside. So, you know what? You know what? Last time I made, I went do not bet with Elisa. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a bet. I may regret it a hundred times. Fine, I'll do it. She smiled. But if I win, yeah, yeah, all fair, no cheating. Elisa turned, went upstairs, and inside the canteen. Why am I doing this? Because she, because she can sit me up regardless if she wants to, since she decided to anyway. Let a heavy side and followed her through the door. All right, card game time. Inside, everything was ready. A few pioneers stood here and there, chattering. And tables were moved out of the way to make room for players and spectators. I looked around. Something went. Oh, oh, whatever. My name was among the players. Yes, me. So Slavia Vizenia, Olisa Vimiku, Mi Vilina. Shurik v. Oyana. And who came up with all this? I patted Electronic who was standing near. Well, of course. It was your most humble servant. He bowed to me jokingly. This made me uncomfortable to the point of squirming. Why in the world am I among the players then? I was disappointed. A few seconds ago, I thought I still had a slim chance to evade this tournament. Then I wouldn't have to fear Elisa's revenge for losing the bet with her. But now, that hope is gone. It's pure coincidence. Yeah, right, coincidence. Except that I was already acquainted with everyone, one of the contestants. While there were a few dozen other pioneers standing in the room, I was seized by anxiety. It's a feeling of being watched while standing in an empty room with no windows and doors. Hey, there's windows right there. Will there be a prize? I asked him lazily. I wanted to distract myself with a pointless conversation. The electronic was just about to answer when Yana came out of nowhere and started jumping around him. Prizes! Prizes! I heard something about prices. It's not the winning. It's not the winning, but the taking part that counts. Do you know what? Do you know what the main ethos of the Olympic Games? A what? No. You don't understand when you go. She made a she made a wry face and jabbed the electronic in the ribs. So what about the prize? Well, I don't know. It's not up to me. He made a helpless gesture. Really, if they came up with this stupid game, at least they could give the winner a chocolate medal or something. Liana suddenly jumped and raced off to somewhere. I wish I was that optimistic. <coughs> so, what about the rules? Wait a bit. Not everyone is here yet. I looked down the canteen. Elisa, Slavia, Lena, Miku, and Sherrod were here. Seems like everyone's here. No, not everyone. Zenia's not here. Does he feel uneasy or is it just me? She's not here, so what? Pick someone else instead. No, I can't do that. He answered slowly. I decided not to ask exactly why I can't do this. Well, go fetch her or something. I don't know. He can't go. He's the host of the event. The camp leader appeared as, as if from nowhere. But we're going to meet you, Evna. Electronic mind. Simeon will go. Right, Simeon? She looked at me and smiled. Of course. Who else? Where is she? In the library, I guess. Okay. I dragged my feet towards the door. Please hurry. What's the electronics problem anyway? Night is coming soon. I was going to take my time, so I slowly placed towards the library. But I found Zenya before I even expected she was sitting on a bench at the square, staring at Jinder, who was silent as always. What are you doing here? Everyone is looking for you. Sitting here, as you can see, she frowned. Well, let's go. I don't want to. She looked away. Why not? I don't want to. I sat beside her. Listen, I don't like the idea of this contest myself, but we can't let everyone down. I surely didn't sell that myself there. A couple days ago, I wouldn't even think of saying something like that. Then you looked at me with surprise in my face. So everyone is waiting for me? Isn't that exactly what I said? Yes. I don't... I won't go anyway. She frowned and hit her face. But why? I gestured with my arms, wondering. I don't know how to play cards. So what? Same problem here. Then how can you play? What, you can only do things that you read about in books or something? Of course. She was surprised. And what if you end up in Anarka and have to rely on honey polar bears to survive? Polar bears don't live in Anarka. Then you smiled. Doesn't matter, it's just an example. Come on, it's not like someone's life depends on the result. She then took her time to think. I just don't want to let anyone down. Right. I agreed sarcastically. And don't you think and don't you think anything funny about that? I didn't get what she meant, but anyway. Obviously everyone has their weak spots. 
In a minute, we were both back at the canteen. Everyone looked at Electronic. So, he cleared his throat. Each round consists of one game. In case of a draw, he replayed the game. After this, the loser drops out, and next round begins. Since the number of volunteers, he looked at me, since the number of players is just eight, we'll probably only have three rounds. Is everything clear? The crowd cheered. And what are the prizes? The prizes, what are they? Oyana, cut it out. Slavia stepped forward and tried to catch Oyana. I won't rest until the prize is mine. Seemed like this girl alone had enough energy to warp jump to Alpha Centauri. Prizes, prizes! She repeated it over and over. Stop it! Slavia tried to reason with her. Electronic seemed to be getting dizzy from all this running around. Let's get started already. I said calmly and added to Oyana. Or you won't get any prizes. You won't get any. <laughs> anyway, but you won't get any prizes. Looks like my argument got through to her, so she took her place. Slavia followed her, giving me a grateful smile as she passed. The pioneers finally settled down. I approached the table it's that Lena sat behind. You don't mind. You don't mind? She looked up and blushed. Don't worry, I don't know the rules myself. And how can I be sure that it's not only myself? I sat down. Turns out we'll have to play the first round together. Yes. Finally, they're trying to start to explain the rules. Alright, I'm gonna stop here, guys. Alright? <clears throat> if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll get the next video uploading as soon as I possibly can. Anyway, guys, this was Everlasting Summer. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys on the other side of the savannah. Goodbye. You might have done sex 42 times, and you didn't get caught.